I'm about to embark on a 206 mile round trip journey in the Tesla Model Y. So I currently have 295 miles of range it's measured on the battery or on the monitor and that should leave us with 89 miles left. Should be plenty to get down and back. So we're gonna test to see how accurate the range is on the Tesla Model Y. This is also a dual motor, so it's not the performance. The range from the factory is 326 miles. Let's see how accurate it is. Also, yeah, uh, did have a, had a piece of carbon here on the M2. It was a carbon uh, mud flap to protect from rock shooting up the side and and it disappeared. So I, I did litter and I'm probably going to jail. And I think if you click this, yep, if you click that, it takes you right to the speed limit. So we'll just go to the speed limit of 75 on the way down to Tucson. And I also have the car in, where is it? Chill mode. So we're in chill mode, which just uh, reduces the aggressiveness of the acceleration. I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible. It's getting a little warm in here. I don't have the air conditioning on, but yeah, we're just cruising along for now and let's see what we're efficiency we're running at. 248 watt hours per mile. That's pretty efficient. I, as far as I'm concerned, anything under 300 is pretty good. The lowest I've ever had it is 180 watt hours per mile. That was on the way back from the Grand Canyon. If you want to check that road trip out, just click the card at the top of your screen. But yeah, just cruising along, trying to be as efficient as possible to give you science, accurate measurements. Because if we're not doing science on this channel, what are we doing? You know? One trick to show you here, my car was just getting like really close following this truck in front here. The, uh, the cameras in this car and how accurate the cruise can control can be is so much better than anything I've ever driven. I, I was in a Toyota Camry rental earlier this year. My mom is calling. Hold on, mom. I'm making a goddamn video. The follow distance is so much further in those cars and this car can be so accurate. So anyways, the quick trip or tip is if you click this button left or right, it adjusts the follow distance. We can make it close as a one and it'll accelerate up and get real close to this truck or we can adjust it back. I think all the way to stage five, stage six, stage seven, clinger, stage seven. So stage seven is the furthest distance it will keep from cars. I think it's seven car lengths, but uh, yeah, just some information for you. If you didn't know, now you know. I can't remember the next line in that song. I'm pretty impressed right now. Uh, you can't see it now, of course, it's over, but I'm in a construction zone and there were some lines that are like painted and some are not painted. And the car is just on autopilot and it was able to navigate like the new construction zone line. Some of them were faded out. So I was really impressed that the car was able to keep its composure and not freak out through that. Obviously I had my hands on the wheel just in case. Um, I think you should do that because it, there are times when this has released like going around turns, it's pretty dangerous. So I do recommend, yes, the car can technically handle itself, but I recommend just keeping one hand at least close to the wheel. Uh, when you're doing that, but it, it's crazy. We're in a construction zone. It was able to navigate the temporary lines Stock went up, baby. We're at our destination. We've gone 102 miles and that's our average watt hours per mile hour and 52 driving time and we have 160 uh, Miles of range left. So there were 33 miles of range that were wasted so that just gives you an idea on the way down. So now we have to do uh, the trip back. So 33 miles wasted on the way down, but 160 miles to go back. It's 75 degrees outside, so we have temperature on our side. I think we're gonna be totally fine. We'll see. About to head home. Did what I needed to down in Tucson. I, if you're wondering what I had to do, I had to, uh, I had to transport a body and bury it. Um, on a construction site under a cement slab slow. It's a cash job, They, you know, it's under the table. It's kind of nice, but it is what it is. Do what you do, right? You know, there's not many jobs out there right now, but we're headed back. Looks like I should be home with 110 miles. Uh, I should have 7% battery left. So running it close, but uh, should be able to do it. Also, in case you're wondering, yes, I do have this cell phone holder from Tomei. I always have them linked down in the description below, but it's, it's a nice holder there, just kind of grips your phone nicely. Some of you have asked if it holds the phone sideways. So let's try that. I don't think, all right, so it does rotate. So I guess you kind of put your phone like that if you wanted to. 
but I think, I don't know, vertical. I don't really use it to be honest with you, but it is, it's nice. I don't, here's what I like about it. It's nice. It doesn't, it blends into the car. It almost looks OEM. And from the same company, I got this matte center console wrap and it's like, it's not a wrap. It's actually a plastic cover with adhesive that goes on here. I kind of misaligned this gap, but that goes around with the rest of the car because there's panel gaps everywhere. So it's actually within character. Uh, but yeah, this is all linked in the description below. And I also have this charger here, USB-C port to lightning. And they also sent me a USB-C to USB-C. So my code, will Jeebs, will save you 10% uh, off. And they always have free shipping. This stuff is high quality. I really like the stuff that they offer. They sent me a pearl white uh, center console. So I'm going to put that on to show you guys what that looks like. But I really like their stuff. It's high quality and fairly priced. So I recommend it. for the crudeness of this statement, but I think it'll help paint a picture for you. Driving an electric vehicle is kind of like eating booty. It's not for everyone, but the people that do it love it. Some of you are probably sitting at home right now like, oh my God, and others of you are probably like, God, I could go for some of that right now. That's what it's like driving an electric vehicle. It's a slight lifestyle change because you have to uh, do a little bit more planning on your trips. You're going to superchargers, you're not going to gas stations. But to me, for what I do, it's been worth it. It's been great, it's exciting. You're taking road trips, do they take longer? Yeah, they do. For this example, it doesn't take longer because the temperature is right. There's all these extra factors that you have to think about, but this is eventually what it's gonna be like. Uh, you're just gonna be going to electric charging stations um, instead of going to gas stations. And for me, it's been a great experience. But as you can see, there is some difference between the range of the battery and or, or the displayed range and your actual range, but it's the same with a car. The difference is you can fill a car up in, you know, five, five to seven minutes. And, and then you're back on the road, whereas Tesla, it's probably 15 minutes for 160 miles of range. But I, I was at a supercharger recently, a V3, that did 703 miles per hour of charging. And I think when conditions are right, it'll actually do 1,000 miles per hour of charging for a few minutes. So look, the technology is getting better. I, I don't even consider myself an early adopter, but I think considering the number of people that have fully electric vehicles, it's still very small to the proportion of people driving internal combustion engines or as you guys love the calm ice. We're on the way back, 149 miles of range left right now. Um, the quality of this video is not as good as the other ones. Click the card at the top of your screen if you wanna check out one of my 4K videos. Uh, those videos I do with Andrew, he's a, a sick uh, Sony A7S III. I'm, I'm saying that wrong, but it's something like that. Uh, so when I shoot videos with him, they'll be in 4K and with good audio, but these are just on the fly and it, for me, I, I just don't have a good enough camera to, I'm working on the quality, we're getting there. Almost back home now. Uh, you can see we have 56 miles left. Um, and it's actually kind of cool here. You can see the uh, boat drag strip area at Wild Horse Pass. It's pretty sick. Everything's going well. I think a big thing with this trip, now I've gone down and back to Tucson and had to stop on the way back to supercharge, but the temperature outside is a huge factor. It's 82 degrees. I'm running the AC on, I think only stage two. Yeah, so I'm running it on stage two at very low temperature and it's not like blowing like crazy. And our watt hours, yeah, 242 we're running it. So this thing's running extremely efficient right now and the trip's been great. So yeah, I guess we'll see what the ending mileage is and what was wasted. Check out this landscaping. You got perfect trees growing out of these bushes. Look at that, look at that. Nice. You know where I can get some cocaine? Okay, so we're basically back for where we started. 102.4 miles on the way down, 109.4 miles on the way back, total of 211.8 miles. So that's round trip, and right now there are 45 miles uh, left of displayed range. So with the miles traveled, which is 211.8 actual miles and 45 miles left, that means, and starting with 295 miles of range, that means 
in terms of range displayed, I used 250 miles while traveling 211.8 miles. That's very good. Uh, going about between 75 and 80 the whole way down there, sometimes 70, uh, anywhere between 70 and 80 is what I was going the entire trip. And the car ran very efficient on the way back, doing 236 watt hours per mile. Um, that's very efficient. And a huge part of that, again, is the outside temperature, which right now is 80 degrees in Phoenix. So temperature has a lot to do with it. Lightly running the air conditioning, that's that's a big deal. Now, if it's a really hot day and you have to run the air conditioning a lot, you're gonna use up a lot more energy. But I was easily able to go uh, 200 miles. I could even have probably gone about 230 miles at that current uh, watt hours per mile. So the car's running very efficient. Um, and the fact that I was just able to drive basically four hours in the car while running fully on electricity is very cool. Um, sound system's great. Yeah, no real complaints, but just wanted to give you like a real life, how much range can you actually get? It's just so important in knowing what your limits are, what your daily habits are. Is this a car that you can actually drive? So yeah, I hope that helps you guys if you haven't bought a Tesla yet or you're not sure if you could take it on a road trip. Again, the nice thing is this navigation will put uh, the superchargers on your way. So if you're if you're using this navigation, the only time I actually use this navigation is when I'm going on a longer trip. Uh, other than that, I will just use my phone because the phone navigation is actually more accurate. This sometimes confuses me. Uh, it's not very clear. So I think the phone is much better. But as far as planning superchargers on your route, this is the much better way to go because it will map them out for you and you don't really need to think about it. So hope that was helpful. Please like the video if you're still with me. Consider subscribing um, if you're interested in Tesla, especially the Model Y. I'll be doing as many visit videos as possible on it. But I also have an M2. I'll be comparing the Tesla to other cars. I've compared it to the Mercedes-Benz GLC, uh, the BMW X3, Audi Q5, all of those things. So hope you like the videos. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.